stuff. And it's a great song. It's not current, but it just the lyrics and the beat and how he broke it down made it very, very, very relatable to me in a lot of different ways uh, from what I do as a clinical social worker. So just really enjoyed it. But again, if you have any questions, any comments, please wait till after. But get in line. Park yourself. And we want to hear from you. That's something we talk about all the time. So then any further ado, let's get right into it. The song, again, is called Drunk By Myself. And it really hit home for me clinically in the way he describes his unhappiness and the feeling of, like, who am I? Where am I? And it starts off like that, just in the, in the intro. Uh, uh, where am I going? Where am I? Yo, it's ill. And, you know, that's such a common theme in uh, religion and in poetry and in literature, which is all about who am I? What, what have I accomplished? Where am I going? What have I accomplished in my life? Where, you know, what is my, my, my tombstone going to read? And he starts off with that. Now, of course, he's originally from Brooklyn. He moved to Queens, of course. But he's been around for a long time, close to like 30 years released a lot of albums and some really, really great music and some song, great songs. Tremendous rapper. And one of the things I picked up from, you know, this song and other songs I was listening to, he's really more of a poet. And that's something I always find interesting about rap is that it's not like the way people always tend to think of it as, but a lot of his poetry. And what's really good is how he uses the music and the beat of the music to tell a story and bring you as the listener into the story so you're feeling like literally like in this case, being along for the ride. So I'm going to break down the parts that I think are clinically relevant. There's some other things I want to touch today regarding this song and a feeling of loneliness and the feeling of depression and the feeling of, you know, what have I accomplished? And we'll just go from there. So and like I said, it's relatable because you feel that it's just yourself. So that was the intro. Where am I going? Where am I? You know, yo, it's ill. All right. Next. In um, the verse one, he says something too, and it's so interesting to me because you know you realize like as much as people want to say we're not we're not alike, we're more alike than we realize. And he says, "My precious baby girl came like forty nights of rain to replenish my adolescent brain. Blessed be her name. Before her, I was insane." And, you know, everyone I've talked to in my life, I'm going to be actually 61 in like a week, month and a half. Um, what's interesting to me is that everyone says the same thing. Whatever I've achieved in life, fame, fortune, you know, money, women, blah, blah, blah. It, it doesn't really matter if I don't have a relationship with my kids. They really talk about that with their spouses, their husband or their wife. Because I always tell the women I work with, we deal with, I say, you know, I wish you have a great guy who kisses your butt, who loves you unconditionally, is always going to be there for you, but probably not going to happen. But your kids, that's really your legacy. And that really is so important. And so many people share with me how they don't talk to their kids. They don't have any connection with them. They haven't spoken to their kid in a decade. Their kid ran from them. There's no connection. They, they try and call, send emails, social media, and there's nothing there. And they really regret that, that their kids are not part of their lives. So here, for someone who is so, in you know, someone's auto, autobiographical, so to speak, you could sense that that's a problem. You know, I don't have access. I don't have a chance to be connected. And that's why I, I stress so much in all the videos that we've done and the live streams, make an effort to be there for your kids. I, I can't stress that enough because the way he says it, it's, it's perfect. My precious baby came like 40 nights of rain to replenish my adolescent brain. It's almost like Noah. Blessed be her name. Before her birth, I was insane. You know, you know, all that rain. So I drive to cool the presence down, delay the pain. Delay the pain. I'm, I'm in agony. I don't have access to my kid. I don't feel connected. So these are the things I want people to kind of talk about tonight. You got these are questions to bring up and talk about, and I'm here tonight to do so. So then I go a little further. As odd as it is, the more I gain, the harder it is. 
It's always like that. We always have this fantasy that somehow, you know, you're going to achieve your dream, wealth, famous, successful. The world will know me. Packed arenas. I'm an amazing athlete. I'm, I'm in front of the camera. Everyone knows my name. I have this. I have this. I own this. The harder it is, the more I gain, the harder. Because you got to have more things to kind of worry about, more things you got to be on top of. I've accepted that a long time ago in, in my own personal life, in my work life. It, it's always going to be stress. There's always going to be turmoil. And I'm really there to fix it. And I, as the more I accept that, the better I am as a worker and as a person. Like, this is what I'm dealing with. It's not going to change. It's not going to somehow magically get better. This is what I do. That's it. And he goes like this. He goes, blank snitching. Mm, can't trust people. What a shock. If I, I'm, I'm going to say this tonight, too. The song is great how he breaks it down. But I'll say this in any, in any situation. Be very careful who you partner with in life. Be very, very careful. And every time I have, like, I trust other people that do the right thing, oddly enough, they do the wrong thing. So when he says that, blank snitching, I ain't saying names. <laughs> I've been there. I've been there. Now, you're looking at my face, you're thinking, how can this guy relate to this artist? But, you know, more ways than not, I do. Because I get it. You want people to do the right thing by you, but you know what? They're not family. They're not your kids. These are people you meet. Some are good, and most are uh, not so good. So always be aware of that, guys, and girls, too. People that you think are your friends are not really. You want to believe. You want to hope, but it doesn't happen that way. Okay, moving on forward. In the chorus, I counted nine times where he does this. He says nine times he, re, he, he says the words drunk by myself and three times he says alone. He's using alcohol as a drug, as medicine. But he starts off with, I am drunk by myself, gun under my seat. I'm drunk by myself. You're not even with anybody. You're by yourself. And the bottle acts like a person. That's the one I can relate to. The bottle is there for me. The bottle is there for me. It's, it's like a mistress. It's like it's an addiction. You think that, you know, oh, it's going to make me feel warm inside. It's going to make me feel happy. It will for a while, but in the end, it always leaves you. And in the end, you got to deal with your problems all over again. They're still going to be there despite your headache and your nausea and your inability to focus for half the day. Yeah, that's it. It's a drug and it affects you. Then it also goes down a little further. When I'm drunk by myself alone, that was the first of three times, but drunk by myself is the first of nine. Drunk by myself, third. Drunk by myself. That's all I have. Going on, it goes in the last, uh, last group, last paragraph. Windows up, blasting AC, going wherever instinct takes me. I hate it when I'm like this. The bottle's my accomplice. It's, it's a great, you know, four four line stanza, and it flows. He's a very talented artist. But you know what? When he says that line, he goes, "I'm trying to find, you know, takes me wherever instinct takes me." You're trying to find a new direction because it's not working. Of all the musicians that we've we've covered, we've covered a lot of them, and I'm constantly learning about new music and new artists. But it's that same theme. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I get into a car and I drive, hoping it's going to take me somewhere different. But in the end, it's the same exit. It's the same entrance. Oh, I'll get off Route 42, or I'll take exit 39, where I'll, I'll, I'll make a quick left and go down this street. And we all want to believe there's like another area to go to, but there really isn't. You know, the original Twilight Zones did that really well, like an alternative fantasy. I'm going to go back to my childhood because uh, middle age is not working. I'm going to go to a place where all kids are respected and loved. Not working. I'm going to go to a different planet. I'll be a god there. Didn't work. Because when you're unhappy with yourself, you're unable to see the bigger picture. And that's what happens to you. 
So listen to the words that it's, I mean, people say that, of course, they let it soak in. They felt like, wow, the guy was talking about their own life. But it's important when you hear that, the problems in the alcohol is still going to be there. The problems from the alcohol is still going to be there. Because it's going to give you that chance to feel like I'm not in this world with a we too, but it's still going to catch up to you. In the chorus, I'm drunk by myself. That's number four. Then he goes a little further. When I'm drunk by myself, alone in the zone. Second time alone and myself, reality. And so few people really want to hear that. They want to deal with that. They want to accept that. Reality is what your life is and what you're going to do with it. And when you don't have that sense of like, I have real friends. These are just hanger-ons. They just want me for my notoriety, my access, my money, my ability to get drugs, to get into the right club, to be special. But they're not my friends. They never really were. There's a great scene in The Sopranos where Carmela says to Tony, she says, you think those guys are your friends? They're not your friends. They just laugh at your jokes. And there's a scene in slow-mo where he says something, and the sky is uh, blue today. Ah! <laughs> and everyone's laughing hysterically, and he's realizing like his wife is not as off as, as he thinks she is. She's pretty clear. You think those people are your friends? Really, they're not. You provide them with work, and they're able to steal with you, but they're not your friends. And when he says this joke and they're all laughing, he looks around the table, looks around the room, and he realizes, are they really my friend? And the answer is they're probably not. And you can be replaced and they'll follow someone else. Verse three, I'm sorry, and drunk by myself, number six. And then it goes into verse three. The reason I want to be alone Tired of all the things that went wrong. You don't want to look in the mirror. I want to be alone. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to share with people. Things have not gone the way that I wanted them to. Been really depressed about it. Have not gone the way they were supposed to. Leave me alone. I'm sick of people. And in a sense, I'm sick of myself. I don't want to be around other people. The more I drink, the more I think bad thoughts. Well, that's what happens. Because alcohol, think about it, is a depressant, you know? And then you need something to pick you up and then bring you down, pick you up, bring you down. That's why you always see alcohol and cocaine, alcohol and, you know, not necessarily weed, but always to get you picked up because the alcohol is a depressant. So I need something to pick up my mood. The more I drink, the more I think bad thoughts. Fake friends who hung around who want to bring you down. I thought my boys, my posse, my homies, whatever term you want to use for it, they're just people you meet. I had this conversation with somebody and I said, look, I said, don't kid yourself, man. People have this impression because of businesses that work is your life and your people at work are your best friends, best friends. But reality is they're just people you work with. You might find one or two people you're tight with. But I always tell people, get hobbies, get a life outside of work. Whatever you enjoy doing, who cares? Those are the people you're going to have a common interest with. That's how you got to look at things. He goes on further. Fake friends who hung around who want to bring you down. Oh, man, I've been burned by people I thought were my friends. And I didn't do any, even do anything, but I got sucked in because they weren't my friends. They weren't my friends. Not knowing who to trust. Rumors about blanks coming through. Ah, I've been there, been there, done that more than once. People are supposed to look out for me, do right by me, ended up screwing me. They didn't care because they never were my friends. Let me tell you something about people who think like that. They're narcissists. They're antisocial. And guess what? They've screwed over hundreds of people. And you just won in a long line of being screwed over. Once you understand that early, that's why we want you to join and be part of our organization while we were raising our rates, the $75 a month. But start to understand this kind of stuff, and you won't make the hundreds of mistakes I made at this point in my life. 
here's the thing too, before I go a little further, I'm taking like a commercial break. You think like, oh, Bruce, man, you know, all the videos, all the downloads, all the thousands of comments that he's answered. He must be perfect, have everything figured out. You know what? I still don't have it figured out. But I wish I would have had somebody like me when I would have been half my age to really sit me down and watch these kinds of videos. It would have changed my life. I was so naive and so stupid about so many things. So I'm giving you a chance now for a ridiculously low price with the value exponentially amazing that you have a chance to really learn about yourself and not make the mistakes I did. That's why we said, you know, years before we used the term preventionist. I, I want to prevent you from making mistakes. So here we go around here. Not knowing who to trust, rumors about blank coming through. Supposedly to shoot at us, not knowing what was true. Not knowing what was true. I thought you were my friend. You turned out to stab me in the back. Oh, I did? I did? I'm so sorry. So I get these lyrics maybe a little bit more poignantly than other people do because I've lived through this. And he's not young, young anymore. He's like 50 now. He's been through this himself a million times too. And then support or what to believe. That's why I'm on the low lately. Choosing a Henny bottle over a friend driving again. Yeah, the bottle. The bottle's my friend. Sip, sip, suck it down. That's my friend. I can rely on my friend, the bottle. It's kind of sad. But for so many people, that's how they go through life. Friday night comes, got to hit the club, got to do some heavy drinking, got to use the weed. But as like my agent producer said before, which is so dead on, guess what? Monday morning comes around. It's not like it's inevitable Friday again, Friday, 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 another Monday. So he really captures being alone because one of the commenters said, you know, you're born alone, you die alone. That's something that we learn is that people think like, you know, you come into this world alone, you go out of this world alone. That's it. Who really are your friends? Again, if anyone has any questions, any comments, kind of taking this kind of methodically going slow, park yourself. I want to hear what you have to say. So we want to hear comments. So please, please, please let us know. Then the chorus, I'm drunk by myself. Number seven, okay? I don't want none of my peeps caught up in none of my beef. I don't want you guys caught up in my life and issues because also what you realize, I'm looking at it from a different angle. I don't want none of my peeps caught up in none of my beef. You know why? Because first of all, I can't trust them to begin with. And secondly, I got to deal with this stuff alone. It's going to fall on me anyway. You know, how many people will say to other people, like, I really count on you. I really trust you. I really have faith in you. 99% of the time, it's like, you know what? I'd rather you not come with me because you're not going to help me. You're not someone I can rely on. So I don't want my peeps, you know, none of my beef because you're useless to begin with. And you're not going to add to the discussion or help me out. Then it goes to when I'm drunk by myself, alone, eight drunk, and number three alone. Drunk by myself, nine. That's at the end of the chorus. And that is how he really does a great job explaining that. But nine times, drunk by myself, three times alone. So for someone on paper, and he's referring to himself to a certain extent, of course, you realize all of this, all of this, it's like I was discussing this also. I use the term holding water in your hand, cupping water. It's going to spill out. What happened to the people? What happened to your friends? You realize it's illusionary. It's not there. Who's really going to be in your corner when you need them? Now, sometimes when we get the lyrics from Genius, they have some thoughts and then someone has some insights, which are good and sometimes they're not so good. But tonight was pretty good. So he goes like this. Um, he, you know, he, you know, difficulty holding up relationships. I kind of like, what's the song about? With years long uh, fiance Carmen to his so-called friends up in his entourage, not to mention the haters. Talking about his depression issues and talking about, you know, the haters and how that's going. 
And, you know, he does a parallel where he's been seen himself and a drunk driver throughout the song from the beginning to the end when he decides to go to a drive to end up where he barely makes it home, hardly makes his way home. Farfetch, not exactly. He goes, one bit, we're all drivers of our own lives, aren't we? And it's a good point, the way, the, the way this person broke it down. We are drivers of our own lives. We are in our own car, and one day that car is going to come to an end. That road will come to an end. There's no more gas in the tank or no more road to drive, and you realize your life is over. And you're the, really, you're the driver of your own life. What did you accomplish? Why are we offering our program? Because we want people to learn how to have a productive life, not to be seduced by the stupids around you who are not interested in helping you, who don't want you to grow, who are jealous of you, who are vicious, who are nasty, and quite frankly, may not even be on your level. We want you to be part of something bigger. The price is going up to $75 a month. Nothing is going to change. I'm still going to knock out these breakdowns. I'm going to do more tweets this weekend. I'm going to watch more movies to get some insight from. We want to get your thoughts on how the platoon stuff went. But we're not stopping. We're going to keep on doing this again and again and again until we get our breakthrough. You know, and let me say something, too. There's some other points that really kind of struck home for me when I was listening to the song over and over again. You get a chance, check out a movie called Mending the Line. All right. Does a good job about PTSD from current soldiers. It's not a true story. But the actor who played the young guy coming back, I'm, looks like Iraq to me. And the older guy, who I recognize, he's a good actor, who played a Vietnam vet. They did a really good job and how they kind of find their own bit of happiness to a certain extent and recognize that they've made mistakes along the way and also that they're being self-destructive to, to themselves and the people around them. And they have to get past that. That's an important thing to understand about yourself. I'm not saying anyone out there goes through life scot-free. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Life is tough. Life is hard. Life is not easy. It's like, well, they just changed the rules in football, but you know, you, you're playing a sport like that. You're going to get hurt. You're going to leave the game. It's, you're going to be aching. You know, you're not going to feel like 100%. But you got to put the time into it, and you got to accept that I'm going to be tackled. I'm going to tackle other people. This is it. This is life. Life is not easy. But the goal is to have a mentor, someone who's been through the wars, to help you understand what it is to be successful. But the movie does a good job of showing to when they can't fight anymore, where they're seen as being damaged with PTSD, where mental health issues or are taking medications, and how they cope. As one of the characters says, the older guy says to the younger guy, he says at one point, he says, I can smell the alcohol on your breath, you reek. And he says to him at the end, he says, look, you think that, you know, alcohol, how do you cope when you feel horrible about yourself and your comrades and your war buddies for a while, but then it, it's not there because what happens is you need more and more and more to get the same effect. It doesn't do its job. You can forget for a couple hours, but then it comes back to bite you. You have to deal with your issues in the most appropriate way possible. Check out that movie and give me your thoughts. I'm going to do a breakdown of it anyway. I really like that movie because you're going to have to face your demons. And finally, I saw a newspaper article. I still look at the newspaper by an art, uh, um, columnist named Steve Lopez. He's out of L.A. And he's in his 70s now, so he talks about elder issues. And what was interesting, and he was talking, this column was about women because women outlive men, which is a known, you know, it's a known fact. And how they struggle now to make ends meet because of inflation. Rents go up. Food prices go up. They're on a fixed income. If they have it, probably most of them don't. They're living hand to mouth. It's not covering the cost. So they talk about having to shop for food cheaply, how to cut up sandwiches, how to substitute cereal for dinner because the, the, the money's not there. And this is becoming their lifestyle where they that's what they focus on all day long. Go into a supermarket and look for the cheapest cuts of meat. Is it something half off? Can they get a deal? Whatever. And it wasn't like I was disappointed to read this. You struggle. 
it's a struggle. And like, this is how your life becomes. And people will like, like, I can't believe this is how my life turned out to be. I'm sure all of them think that because we all want that we're going to be young forever and get everything together done. Doesn't work that way. So anyone right now that wants to say something that has any comments, throw it in there. I'm ready. I broke down this song. It was a great song. He's it, Nas. I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly. He's a great artist. There's no argument. Get to the lyrics and to the kind of put. And for me, it's a little bit different because I'm singing a little bit of a hit us up. We want to hear people's comments. I want people to know we're going to keep on doing this stuff, but we're going to be charging for it when you sign on. Be $75 a month to get me at least once a week. Q&A, ask me questions, ask me direct stuff. And if you want me for more, it'll be a little bit more money. Because we want to make it accessible to everyone. But also to learn about yourself and understand how these songs are a lot more poignant than people sometimes want to see or want to believe. It was a great choice tonight. I was happy I did the, I did the breakdown. So I'm going to give it another have any thoughts but it was just interesting to me how the, it, it's the same thing no matter really what artists that we cover they talk about their children you know if they have them or not we did Kendrick Lamar and I you know I, who knows what his plans are we're not tight we don't hang out but I wonder if he's going to take a back seat now that he has young kids and he wants to spend time with them I can't be on tour for 18 months we're 60,000 people are calling my name or they'll pay any kind of price to see a show of mine. Yeah, but I didn't read to my kid tonight. Yeah, I didn't take my kid to the park. Yeah, I didn't get my kid a cookie or a donut at 7-Eleven. Or I didn't take him to the beach like I said I want to do. So, yeah, it's great. It's great. It's great. The acclaim. What am I really getting out of it? Oh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push off a, an interview. Oh, people love you and they think you're incredible. You know, but I'm talking to you. I'm not doing the ABCs with my little, I'm not giving her a bath. We're taking my son out, you know, to, to, to take him for a walk, pull, pull him in his wagon. I got to do something that's really relevant. So you kind of start to step back and realize this is what really is important because otherwise my best friend becomes a bottle of Hennessy, bottle of Crystal. So again, any questions, any comments, throw them down, but we're going to keep on doing this stuff because that's where we want you to get um, your understanding of PTSD, alcoholism, drug abuse, and what is really important in one life in terms of maintaining real relationships. All right. So we're good here. Contact us any way you want. We're accessible. We want to hear from you. How If you want to sign up, let's do it. But with that, Bruce Moffs and LCSW, Sunridge, Nevada.